Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. It's entitled Enhancing Synthesis Workflows Through Computer Assisted Retrosynthesis. This webinar is part of the seventh annual event in the Drug Discovery and Development Virtual Events Series. My name is Dr. Ryan Kapreski, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. Today's educational web seminar is presented by LabRoots and sponsored by Merck. For more information about Merck, please visit www.emdgroup.com. Before we begin, I would like to remind everyone that this event is interactive. We encourage you to first participate by communicating with other attendees using our live chat feature during the presentation. You can find the live chat located at the left of your screen. You can also participate by submitting as many questions as you'd like during the presentation. To do so, simply type them into the Ask a Question box and click Submit. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation. You'll also notice that the speaker has provided a survey located to the right of your screen. This survey will be available during both the live session and later on demand. If you have trouble seeing or hearing the presentation, click on the Help Desk button located at the top of your screen within the navigation bar or from the lobby within the event. Now, without further ado, I'd like to present today's speaker, Dr. Ava Gajuska. She's Head of Product Management for Cynthia Retrosynthesis Software, uh, which is part of the Digital Chemistry Solutions Group. For Dr. Gajuska's complete biography, please visit the presenter tab from the menu on the left of your screen. Dr. Gajuska, thank you for being here. We're looking forward to today's presentation. Thank you, Ryan, for this kind introduction and a welcome everyone that has joined us today. Uh, let me share my slide deck right now. Um, Hope you can see my screen um, now. Let's see. Okay. So what I will be talking about today is what we in Cynthia do to help overcoming the synthetic challenges in the drug discovery. And um, how to do it actually with the Cynthia software. And I will talk about a few solutions that we have uh, in the software that can really accelerate drug discovery, making the synthesis and pathway selection and molecule selection as well uh, faster. And I will be talking about Cynthia Web App that can help with planning the synthetic pathways for the single targets, um, but also very, very soon for the entire libraries of target molecules to get this entire library uh, of, for example, potential drug candidates uh, using a shared synthetic pathway. And I will be talking about this at the end of my presentation. But what I will be also discussing today is the Cynthia APIs that um, enable quick filtering of the potential drug candidates using Cynthia Synthetic Accessibility Score or also enable connecting Cynthia results with the internal uh, drug discovery solutions. As chemists, uh, we spend a lot of time learning all of the chemical reactions, but we are somewhat biased sometimes on the reactions that we use very frequently and we actually may not remember all of the reactions that have ever been done so we often fall into the bias of using only a subset of transformations to synthesize our, our target target molecules and this way we actually might overlook a transformation that could be really really useful for a particular synthesis and also for a particular molecule Another problem we as chemists face uh, is that if we work on the target that actually has been pre previously published, we can experience sometimes that uh, actually the previously reported pathway, the literature pathway, is not uh, reproducible. If, on the other hand, um, the molecule is a completely new molecule, there would not be an exact synthesis or even sometimes similar synthesis in the literature. A failure of the synthesis can also happen at any step. So it would be beneficial to have something that actually predicts various of potential pathways, various of potential ways uh, by which you can synthesize your molecule. And finally, it's impossible to remember the entire, ca entire catalogs of molecules that you can buy. So it would be great to have something that actually unites 
all of this together. And this is actually why Cynthia was designed to, to, to unite all of these challenges and, and solve these challenges um, and, and help chemists with all of these um, problems that, that they can face. By uniting not only this available chemicals databases, but also the chemical knowledge and also using high power computing, strategic chemical algorithms that uh, were developed in Cynthia, our software is quickly um, is, is, is quickly able to design the full pathways for the target molecules, whether or not these molecules have ever been made before, starting with commercially available starting materials. So looking at the molecule synthesis workflow, there are a few phases of this process in which Cynthia actually can, can help you with. And uh, first stages are the filtering and scoring of huge sets of molecules. This can be done using our Cynthia APIs, and that will be a great help to predict, for example, the synthetic accessibility score, or also connect Cynthia with some internal softwares, for example, for molecular modeling, for visualization, for, uh, for selection of the drug candidates. In the root design phase, perfect fit is Cynthia Web App. And I will talk about how Cynthia can help on this various stages uh, in the molecule synthesis process in more details on the next couple of slides. Um, but I would like to start with discussing few key pillars of Cynthia of how it was developed over many years during which we were working on the proficiency of the results, on the chemical quality of the results, um, so that Cynthia's predictions are actually uh, the ones that you can rely on and, and can help you in your day-to-day -day work. In the problem of retrosynthesis, the first thing to do is to teach the computers the rules of organic chemistry. And this generalization of this literature precedence to the reaction rules is absolutely crucial if we want the software to not only generate the plans for known molecules that have ever have been have been published before, made before, but also for completely novel targets, never synthesized before, like recently isolated natural products or novel drug candidates. And these reaction rules are written in the so-called SMILES SMARTS notation and have to delineate the scope of admissible substituents uh, and also the reaction core. This information can be either automatically extracted from large databases of previously published reactions or it actually can be hand coded by the expert chemists based on the underlying reaction mechanism. Unfortunately, for these rules that are automatically extracted from the literature, it's actually not possible to a priori know how wide this reaction core should be uh, or how to accurately select incompatible groups. But all of this information is, is crucial if we need our software to propose chemically correct synthetic pathways. And I would like to give you a quick example of such a machine extracted rule and some of the key ways this approach can provide inappropriate chemistries. So the examples you can see on my screen today uh, is a stereoselective alkylation reaction. And the core of this rule is colored in orange and it specifies atoms that are changing their environments and that they are denoted with the stars here. And also what it does, it includes flanking atoms up to three bonds away. But nevertheless, even with such extended neighborhood, this rule, as you can see, does not capture the influence of this stereodirecting group. Of course, it's possible to extend the number of atoms that are included in this rule. However, um, this would make all of the simple transformations over specialized. And by that, it, they are applicable only for very precisely defined skeletons. So without inspection by a human expert, defining the proper rule core is incompatible and, and impossible. So moreover, um, if we can take a look at the reaction uh, and, and in application of this reaction rule on the examples, uh, please take a look at this example in the B. So um, here you, we have a substrate with a nitropentane side chain, which actually is not feasible since this, since this nitroalkyl group is incompatible due, due to the presence of this acidic hydrogen atoms here. In the example C, Despite the absence of this distance to your directing group, which we, we were discussing a second ago, um, this reaction will still pr predict 
incor incorrectly stereoselective outcome, even of course um, in the experiment, a racemic mixture would be obtained. So when you look at the potential ways this reaction rule could be applied in retrosynthetic design, if it would be applied under the right circumstances, you will get an appropriate and successful outcome as in example A here, but you can also have an inappropriately proposed alkylation, um, for example, in the presence of this nitro group, in the example B, uh, or as in example C, stereochemical outcome, even when experimentally a racemic mixture would be obtained. And for that actually reason, we in the Cynthia team began to hand, hand coding the transformations based on the reaction mechanism so that Cynthia can actually recognize and take into account all of this critical context that is so crucial to predict uh, chemically correct results. So what you can see here on my screen now is an example of one of our reaction rules. These reaction rules in Cynthia are coded by the expert PhD level organic synthetic chemists, and, and they are coded in a way so that they are able to consider all of the things that human chemists would consider when looking at the reaction. So are there, for example, any groups that are incompatible or uh, that needs to be protected? Or for example, what are the structural features of the substrates that needs to be there for this reaction to proceed or that are influenced in stereochemistry, regiochemistry of the reaction's products. But these rules are also written in a general way that allows them to be applied uh, not only on the known molecules, but also on the completely novel targets never synthesized before. And this is an example of how such a rule looks like. This code here not only describes all of the stereochemical and structural aspects of the substrates that actually need to be there for this reaction to proceed, but also um, it has all of this crucial chemical context, the groups that cannot be present in the substrates that are incompatible with the reaction conditions, as well as some other information about uh, references uh, in which you can see such similar transformations or the typical reaction conditions. And currently, Cynthia has more than 100,000 of this reaction uh, rules that were coded by the expert chemists with all of this context information, like incompatible group, protection requirements, stereochemistry, radiochemistry, uh, considering steric and electronic effects of, uh, of the molecules and of the substrates um, to not only be applicable to previously published molecules, but also to completely novel targets. Let's now move to the second pillar of Cynthia, which are the algorithms that are responsible for the chemical logic to design the pathways that are selective, uh, that are not having any strain-related problems, that are not having any functional groups uh, that are uh, very reactive or that are not having structural motifs that under certain reaction conditions would actually undergo rearrangement. So all of the things that assure the chemical correctness of the predicted molecules. What Cynthia also has, um, it includes algorithms that are responsible for strategizing over multiple steps during the pathway design. So for example, Cynthia combines the steps that could be performed under the same reaction conditions, like for example, in the simultaneous reactions, or reactions that once applied in a retrosynthetic direction can provide the possibility of applying some other highly simplifying transformations. Other algorithms in the software uh, are designed to stabilize highly reactive functional groups along the synthetic pathways. Like you can see here, this highly reactive primary alkyl iodide was stabilized in a retrosynthetic direction by Cynthia as a metal ester functionality. But what is especially important here, all of these algorithms in Cynthia are working together analyzing the pathways globally, which means analyzing millions of millions of such combinations of reactions and um, retrosynthetic cuts that are possible to come up with the most optimal solution. Let me show you closer one of such algorithms that Cynthia uses to create the synthetic pathways. So when you plan a synthesis of a complex organic molecule, uh, it is often not sufficient to just gradually simplify the structure of your target with each retrosynthetic step, um, but instead it might be beneficial to go through an intermediate that does not produce any 
immediate gain, uh, but somewhat sets the scene for a step that offers a significant structural simplification. And strategic two-step reaction sequences in, in Cynthia are such computer-discovered sequences of reactions in which the first step complexifies the structure in a retrosynthetic direction, um, but basically enables then in the second step a highly simplifying this connection. And in the example you can see here on my screen today, uh, you can see the first step uh, here was introducing a five-membered ring in the retrosynthetic direction, but, but actually by doing so in the second retrosynthetic step, which is an alkylation alkylation sequence, this step offers significant structural simplification. So such strategic sequences of reactions are often very hard to identify by human, as we are rather more uh, used to simplifying, not complexifying the structure. But when such a sequence is, is identified, it's very, very powerful. It, it can unlock new and elegant synthetic approaches. And the Cynthia database was expanded to include almost 5 million of such uh, strategic sequences from a computer-driven uh, discovery approach that we've taken. The vast majority of the strategic two-step reaction sequences was actually unknown in the literature. Here you can see a few examples that I would like to show you today of, of this new computer discovered reaction sequences. And if you take a look at with me in the example, at the example A, you can see an exo 53 radical cyclization, which was followed by a tandem birch reduction and hydrolysis of an enol ether that construct this ring system, which is very often found in the uh, structures of terpenes. Another example I would like to talk about today is this example uh, in, the, in H, uh, which is based on a cationic cyclization of this epoxy alkene here, and then reduction of this furan ring here. And this is a combination of reaction that constructs a structural motif that is present in many natural products, such as, for example, lanosterol or myricetic acids. And uh, all of the strategic two-step reaction sequences were actually incorporated into Cynthia. So many, and many also of them, offer very, very high degree of structural simplification and also are elegant and counterintuitive ways of making very diverse scaffolds. Another example uh, of this pillar two algorithms, uh, algorithmic improvements in Cynthia, uh, was taking an AI-based approach to augment the predictions of our reaction rules. And the good example here is the deals alder reaction filter within Cynthia that enables better prediction of regio selectivity, diastereo selectivity, site selectivity um, of deals alder reaction products based on the random forest classifier. And here you can see some examples of these predictions um, based on this random forest classifier uh, we created. This filter correctly predicts the outcome of these other reactions. And here you can see some of the examples that actually were performed in some classical total synthesis and um, incorrect products, uh, which were indeed not proposed by Cynthia and also were not obtained experimentally, you can see on the rightmost column. Okay, so let's now move to the third Cynthia key pillar. Third key pillar of Cynthia is this advanced path search algorithm itself. And this algorithm is actually scoring and exploring in a retrosynthetic direction uh, all of the possible cuts and combining this, this, um, this steps into full pathways that actually start from commercially available compounds and also are taking into account all of the user requirements for the synthesis. But what actually are those requirements? We are moving now to the fourth uh, pillar of Cynthia. And of course, for different projects or different chemists, this synthesis requirements can be totally different thing. And this is why Cynthia actually has all of these customization options that one can use. For example, to limit the cost of the starting materials, to, um, to set up the protecting group requirements, to ask Cynthia, for example, to cut a specific bond in my target in the synthetic pathway, or on the other hand, to ask Cynthia to remain intact specific substructures of, uh, of the target molecules. Um, you can also customize 
Ascentia to avoid toxic intermediates to, for example, use uh, some specific catalyst or reagents to exclude or promote specific reaction classes to avoid gaseous reagents, for example, or, or metal catalysis. So a lot of things that can you can adjust um, to get the results according to your needs. And this is especially important in the context of sustainable chemistry to for example, avoid toxic substances or, for, for example, transition metal catalysis. Let's now walk through some of the experimental validations of Cynthia predictions that were uh, published before. And the first I want to talk about are the seven molecules that were of high interest to the Merck team. And some of them were suffering from low yield or high cost. Uh, some were completely novel, uh, never synthesized before proving too risky to execute actually without a robust uh, route. Throughout the course of Cynthia route planning for these molecules, we kept in mind that we would like to also mimic the everyday pressure that a chemist may be under. So we chose in the routes that um, started with commercially available building blocks that were in stock and also ready to ship. Uh, we avoided the reactions that were not feasible from a safety standpoint. And also, uh, we had an eight-week timeline under which we had to declare the success of a fa or a failure of this experiment. And the routes that were executed as part of the synthetic experiments proved to be actually successful at the bench. Uh, for example, uh, let's take a look at the molecule here. Uh, the first step in this executed pathway for alpha hydroxyacetazolam was a free component a Gewald reaction chosen uh, for the installation of this hydroxyacetyl group, group at, at the first stage in the synthesis. And this was especially important because being a novel molecule, never published before, never synthesized in the literature, uh, this hydroxyacetyl group was the most crucial piece of the molecule to be installed. So having been successful with this Gewalt reaction, this allowed us the construction of benzodiazepine and triazol fused rings to yield hydroxyatizolam uh, target molecule. Another success synthetic execution was utilizing the database of the two-step two synthetic strategies I was talking um, about in the previous slides. And here, the software was utilized to find a more concise route for imperanin. And this is a platelet aggregation inhibitor that actually has been previously published in the literature several times with pathways that were ranging from 8 to 12 steps. As shown on the slide here was the shortest route that was published by Shatuk uh, in 2001, comprising eight linear steps. Cynthia, however, this is a pathway designed um, by the software, had proposed previously unreported pathway that also included this new step strategic sequence that had been discovered by the computer. And this is marked uh, in red here. You can see it here. And this sequence actually comprises the enhanced selective addition of a vinyl epoxide 1 to the aldehyde 2 according to Krish's methodology, and then a subsequent reduction of a benzyl alcohol 3. The final step in this route was olefin metathesis of this alkenes 4 and 5 uh, using second generation of Grubbs catalyst. And Cynthia's pathways were, pathway was then validated experimentally uh, to successfully give this imperative final product in 27% overall yield and 97% of enantiomeric excess. One of the next executed routes was the one enabling the synthesis of lamellodisidin A. And this um, molecule is a recently isolated natural product, a breached polycyclic sesquiterpene, as, as you can see here, which was, and the route for this molecule was actually automatically planned uh, by uh, Cynthia. The key elements of uh, the pathway that Cynthia proposed for this molecule was the sequential construction of this intermediate strain here, and then hydroboration and Suzuki coupling, intramolecular deals other cyclo uh, cycle addition, which provides access to this desired scaffold of lamellodisidin A, and the final hydrolysis to yield the stereodefined hemiacetal final uh, product. Experimental yields obtained um, while validating the synthetic pathways, uh, pathway at the bench, uh, you can see uh, in blue. And the benchtop execution of this pathway actually revealed that Cynthia correctly predicted uh, the stereochemistry of this Diels-Alder reaction cycle adduct. 
and also um, the selective formation of the thermodynamically more stable and also less hindered stereoisomer in the last step uh, to enable the synthesis of lamellodigitin A in a very respectable overall yield of approximately 17.5%. Moving to another example of the synthesis that was planned by Cynthia and executed at the bench, uh, this synthesis work was performed during the COVID-19 pandemic. And Cynthia here was used to synthesize the antiviral viral, uh, umifenovir uh, drug, as well as 11 other antiviral and anti-inflammatory uh, drugs. And this was especially important as in this moment of history, we, re we really were uh, challenged uh, with the supply chain problems. So having a solution that actually could give you different possible possibilities of the synthesis of your compounds, taking also into account what starting materials are available or will be available for you in your lab was really, uh, really important at this point of time. One of the most recent examples um, published in science actually last year was the synthesis um, planned for, by Cynthia for stemoamide, uh, an alkaloid uh, here. Mm, and the Cynthia pathway was, uh, was including the step, which was an organocatalyzed mining reaction, which you can see here on the screen, which also offered a very high uh, degree of structural simplification and enables the synthesis of this molecule um, uh, pretty quickly to construct this reaction, core, this molecule core. Let's now move to how actually Cynthia presents the results. And I'm very happy to say that we have um, three innovative ways of presenting the results that have been a part of a major upgrade of Cynthia in August last year. And the first way, that how we, what the users can use to go through the results is the building blocks view in, you can, in which you can see the building blocks used in the specific pathway to construct a target molecule. The second view is the bond disconnection view in which Cynthia marked the bonds that, bonds that actually were proposed to be cut uh, for construction the target molecule. The third view is the schematic pathway view, so something that we are used to uh, looking at the, in the publications at, um, as, as we are chemists and we are, we are often uh, seeing this, this specific view. So let's move to some more details about these visualizations. Building blocks view enables actually to quickly identify the building blocks that construct the target molecule. And each of these building blocks actually is colored to show which parts of the target molecule this actually constructed. After clicking on the molecules, all, the users can also see some more information about the specific starting material. The second view is the disconnection view that is accessible after clicking on the target tile. And what you can see here are actually the cuts that were proposed by Cynthia in each pathway uh, with the reaction names. So the users can either hover over uh, the, uh, the, the, the specific bonds to see the, the names of the reactions, but also can use the checkboxes here on the right. So for example, um, they can see that after covering over this bond that this was proposed to be created using nucleophilic aromatic substitution. The third view is the pathway view that can be accessed with the toggle here on the right side. And in this view, the users actually can see each step of the pathway uh, with details like reaction conditions, like reaction names, the prices, the prices of the starting materials. And uh, moreover, this is a very interactive view. So uh, the users can access a lot of additional information about the reactions after clicking on the reaction arrows, um, like also similar reactions, for example, from the literature, uh, information about the molecules, and as what Cynthia does, Cynthia selects 50 pathways from millions of millions of potential ones for each of, them, of the molecules. So the users can scroll down through this potential, uh, this list of pathways. And also um, they can filter the pathways by limiting to specific reactions, for example, or intermediate that he or she wants to use, or for example, a specific reaction type. Additional possibilities that Cynthia offers is downloading the pathway into PDF format and also, also sharing the pathway uh, with other Cynthia users. 
One of the very new algorithms that, um, that we added recently is an advanced algorithm that is predicting chiral separation steps on the pathways. And Cynthia identifies here the structural motifs that can be separated and includes such steps uh, in the predicted routes. Let's quickly move to Cynthia APIs. And the APIs can be used on earlier stages of the drug discovery process. For example, during molecule sets filtering based on, for example, their, their synthesizability um, using our synthetic accessibility score or to connect Cynthia results with some internal solutions for drug discovery or some internal workflows. The first API uh, I would like to talk about is Cynthia Synthetic Accessibility, uh, Accessibility Score, uh, SAS API, which uh, predicts how easy or how, how hard it is to make a molecule in the lab based on the molecular structure. So this is a machine learning model that was trained on 33,000 of molecules uh, and trained on the number of synthetic steps for each of those molecules, how many of them were used um, for, for its synthesis. And what it does, it returns a score that approximates how many steps it takes to synthesize the molecule using commercially available building blocks. And um, what are, is especially important about this, this model are two things. First, it is very sensitive to even small changes in the molecule structure. And the second thing, um, the estimation of the score for one molecule is very, very uh, fast. It's only taking 25 milliseconds per molecule. So this actually enables screening of millions of molecules in a very short time. Cynthia full retrosynthesis API, so the second type of API, are actually Cynthia results, Cynthia pathways, um, but in a form that can be connected with your internal drug discovery a solution for either further processing or for visualization. Okay, now I would like to talk about something that is coming to Cynthia very, very soon, and this is a multi-target oriented analysis. Uh, we call this feature Shared Path Library, and this Cynthia functionality will enable to simultaneously plan a synthetic pathway for the entire library of target molecules in a multi-target oriented analysis. And what Cynthia will do here is it will prioritize the routes that are sharing the synthetic steps. So as a Cynthia user, you can upload into Cynthia a library of target molecules that you want to synthesize. And what a Cynthia will do is it will try to identify starting a synthetic pathways that have the highest number of common intermediates and also a starting materials. So um, this actually enables to synthesize your molecule library in the most efficient way, utilizing as much as possible uh, the common intermediates. Let's take a look at the real life example of such a library. And this is a library of novel aminobutanoic acid based inhibitors for the treatment of the lung cancer that was published in uh, JMED Chem just a few weeks ago. And what we did, we entered these molecules from the publication into Cynthia for it to design a shared synthetic pathway. So after just a minute, the software came up with the pathway that included a common synthetic steps, common intermediate for the entire library of eight molecules. And you can see it here. These branches actually are the same. So uh, these are the, the, the parts of the pathways that was shared between all of the eight targets in the library. So um, this is how the results are displayed in the software. I just zoom, zoomed in one of the uh, pathways. The common reactions and molecules are highlighted with a color, so you can quickly see how many steps um, in the pathways actually uh, have in common for this entire target uh, library. And uh, as we entered eight molecules, there is a number eight displayed here, so it means that this whole branch was actually sh shared between all of the molecules in the library. Um, this is another example, 12 molecule target uh, library, and we did the same thing here. We uploaded the library to Cynthia and started the search for a common synthetic pathway. And after just a few minutes, Cynthia came up with a common solution to all 12 mo molecules 
uh, sharing common steps. So um, as, as you saw previously, this parts of this pathways are actually identical. And um, there are indications of on both molecules and reactions on how many bran how, how many same branches were used actually in the pathways for an entire library of analysis. So we started with 12 target molecules. So we can see that the entire branch actually has been repeated uh, for all 12 molecules to synthesize this intermediate and then uh, use it. If the user prefers to highlight some of the molecules it's, or reactions, um, the removing of the coloring is also possible here. Here you can see only the coloring uh, for the molecules. And here, uh, only the reaction arrows are colored, um, as I mentioned, 12 times repeated. Um, and this functional, functionality actually enables quickly predict what is the most optimal strategy for synthesizing the entire library of target molecules with the shared steps. For human, it is sometimes very hard to come up with the pathway that is a common one, especially when target molecules have functional groups that are uh, compatible with different reaction conditions. But for Cynthia, on the other hand, uh, our algorithms can screen billions of billions of molecules with a very, very short time coming up uh, with the most optimal solution for this entire library of molecules. And by that, a chemist can actually synthesize one intermediate in a bigger quantity to quicker get all of the molecules in the lab. So what are the four main gains and that one can get by using Cynthia? First is reducing the risk of overlooking a valuable pathway that would, for example, make your synthesis shorter by one step or few steps or using cheaper uh, or more safe starting materials. And the second thing is reducing the time and cost of the synthesis during both design the initial pathway, but also during development of the production synthesis and its optimization. The process chemists really like uh, using Cynthia to have this possibility to explore all of the possible synthetic options that Cynthia suggests. Um, and also this is connected with some time uh, savings and uh, sparkling innovation, but because by providing this innovative ideas for the pathways, Cynthia sparks innovations in the teams that are aimed to, for example, design an optimal solution, meeting the project needs, meeting sustainable chemistry needs. And that is also something we very often hear from our, many of our Cynthia users that Cynthia actually accelerates this brainstorming uh, in the teams. And the last thing um, you can predict synthesizability to filter millions of millions of molecules with a very short time using current synthetic accessibility score API, or also to connect Cynthia results with some internal softwares um, using our uh, full retrosynthesis API. We are very, very happy to talk to you about how Cynthia can support you and your synthetic workflows to simplify the pathway design and also enable you to get uh, your target molecules as quickly and as efficiently as possible. So please feel free to contact us. Uh, you can also visit our website, sentionlight.com. There is a contact form there that uh, you can use, and we will, of course, get back to you as soon as possible. And uh, with that, thank you so much for today, and I'm happy to answer any questions. OK, uh, thank you, Dr. Gajuska, for your informative presentation. We'll now start the Q&A portion of the webinar. If you have any question you'd like to ask, please do so now. Just click on the Ask a Question box located on the right of your screen. All right, let's get started. First question we have is, what are the key features and benefits of Cynthia Retrosynthesis software in enhancing synthesis workflows? I would say that um, there are three maybe key things that, uh, that, uh, that are worth mentioning briefly. So first is the synthetic accessibility score that we have in our Cynthia API that enables screening of millions of millions of molecules in a very short time, which is so important in the drug discovery, uh, selecting the target and filtering the potential uh, molecules that you want to try in the lab. And the second thing I would say are all of these customization options that we have so that 
all of the chemists with different project needs and also different needs for specific molecule synthesis can be met with avoiding transitional metal catalysis, with uh, asking Cynthia to cut specific bonds or remain intact specific substructures of your target molecule. And the third thing I would say this uh, library feature that is coming very, very soon and that will enable quick uh, identification of a common pathway for the entire library of uh, potential drug candidates, for example, or potential or, or other target molecules uh, to share the biggest number of common steps and um, enable the, the quick uh, synthesis of the entire library uh, very, very fast based on a common pathway. Yeah, you mentioned that library during your talk. Um, what an what a excellent uh, development. We're really looking forward to that in the next release. Um, okay, the next question is, um, how does Cynthia specifically protect data, uh, user data? This is a very, um, very important question because we are chemists and in drug discovery, we are dealing with molecules that uh, are very secret, right? Uh, so we in Cynthia have the ISO certification 27001 and also uh, what we do is that the molecules and the searches that our users have uh, in the software are absolutely um, not uh, accessed by any of um, you know people from the Cynthia team. So this is only uh, results specific for these users. Nobody has an access to that. So that, uh, for example, pharmaceutical companies can be assured that their data is actually safe in the software. Gotcha. Excellent. Um, Thank you for that. So let's see, we have another one here. Uh, okay, how does the application of user-guided customizations to search parameters facilitate tailored results for specific project requirements? Th this is a good question. Um, so there are different ways in which you can customize the search in Cynthia. And like the most basic thing you can think about is specifying the price of the starting materials, for example, for the pathways. So to ask Cynthia to start from molecules that are available in a like bigger quantity, much cheaper, um, but um, but also the other way around. So starting a synthesis, synthetic pathway um, from something that can be even more even more expensive, but uh, is pretty complex. The second thing I would say are this do cut, do not cut features that we have in the software. And this, for example, enables asking Cynthia to start from using chiral pool molecules to, for example, not perform any analysis selective reactions or diastero selective reactions during the pathway, the pathway and the synthesis, just start um, just ask Cynthia to start with chiral pool molecules um, and also other options that are especially important, I would say, in the context of sustainable chemistry. So avoiding specific um, toxic molecules, avoiding transitional metal catalysis, uh, avoiding reactions that are need to, need to undergo under the pressure. So um, a lot of this customization options, I would say, and that Cynthia have more as well, um, and that, that I will not mention here, but, um, but some of them are very, very important to just tailor the results to your specific needs, not only the equipment that, uh, that one has uh, in his or her labs, um, but also um, for specific needs of, of a specific molecule synthesis. Yeah, that's it's such a flexible tool. I love that. Um, thank you so much for, for explaining all of that. I think we have time for just one more question. Um, let's see. Oh, this is a good one. So people want to know how much training is typical to become proficient with the Cynthia platform? So um, to just start the search in the software, I would say that it requires like one hour of training that we, of course, support our customers, our users with uh, to get more profi proficient in the software. So maybe to know, get to know all of these options, configurations options that you can have, all of the search types that you can do in the software. I would say like a like few hours of trainings is absolutely enough. And uh, from the Cynthia side, uh, we are um, really enabling not only the group trainings to make specific 
synthetic groups uh, of our customers proficient within the software, but also we are always happy to do one-on-one -on -one trainings uh, to, to get this, um, this knowledge, really hands-on experience with, uh, with a, an expert in the tool uh, so that you can really you know, get, uh, get all of this uh, information of what you can use, how you can use, and to use actually Sentia in the most efficient ways uh, to your projects, to your, uh, your synthesis and drug discovery. Yeah, and I think I think if I recall correctly, our team also has some on-site training available for larger organizations. Um, so absolutely. a lot of training, right. a lot of training options. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That is right. So um, for for large organizations, we are we are offering the the the, the group trainings, on-site trainings with a hands-on experience, also with our Cynthia experts coming on site and and giving this live experience as well uh, with uh, you know using the software uh, with the entire group. Yeah. Great. Okay. Well, that's all the time that we have. Uh, thank you again, Dr. Gajuska, for your time and important research. Um, before we go, I would like to thank the audience for joining us today and being a great audience with interesting questions. I'd also like to thank our sponsor, Merck, for joining, uh, for sponsoring the webinar today. Questions that uh, we didn't have time for today and those submitted during On Demand will be addressed by the Digital Chemistry Solutions team via the contact information you provided at the time of registration. The webcast can be viewed on demand for one year until February 21st of next year, and Lab Roots will alert you via email when it's available for replay. We encourage you to share that email with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. And until next time, farewell.